So let me describe the typical deal flow. And this is how I do it. I'm not saying this is necessarily the only way to look at it, but typically this is what happens. Um, typically, I will look at about a thousand properties and I will triage a thousand of these. So when I mean triage, I mean spending no more than 10 or 15 minutes looking at the deal. So that might involve a back of an envelope calculation, or it might be just, you know, looking at some of the descriptions, some of the leases, some of the tenancy schedules. So I want to be able to go through as many as possible because these are the numbers, I, tell, I kid you not, that it requires for you to get one deal across the line. So, so after you've triaged a thousand opportunities, you might only end up with a hundred that's got potential. So out of those hundred, that's when you would start doing the detailed analysis, which I'll run through with you guys today. So after you've done the detailed analysis, you might realize, oh, well, only 10 of these actually meet my criteria, you know, my funding criteria, my profit margins, blah, blah, blah. So I'll probably go and try to inspect these properties. Now, um, obviously try your best to go inspect, but I do understand that sometimes you might be looking at properties in a different state. So it's not feasible for you to go and inspect it. But that's fine. There's a lot of tools, technology out these days that it makes it a lot easier for you guys to do some virtual inspections. But nonetheless, um, you know, inspection is a very key component of it. Sometimes you might do it as part of DD. So let's say you got out and inspected those 10 properties, and then you realize, well, only five of these are actually any good because one's next to a contaminated site, one's next to, you know, the jail, whatever, whatever. You know, one's got a roof that's leaking, whatever. And you might only end up offering... Um, putting an offer on five of these opportunities. And out of five, you might only get two that gets accepted, which goes into due diligence. And then out of the two that goes into due diligence, only one might actually come up good because the other one, you found problems with it. Okay, so this is typically what is required to get that one deal that's going to make you hundreds of thousands of not millions of dollars. So the question now is, all right, where do I find these opportunities? So I often look at it um, as a bit of a street. There's a two-way street. So you've got your outbound opportunities and you've got your inbound opportunities. Okay, so your outbound opportunities are probably more relevant to you guys right now because you guys are just starting on this journey. So you guys might not have established the network or have the reputation in the market right now. So most of your heavy lifting will probably be done outbound. So that would in involve, you know, doing your research online, you know, jumping on Google, jumping on realestate.com. Um, it'll, it'll involve you calling agents, you know, asking agents what have they got and, you know, canvassing them. And then also just networking, networking with people that who might be able to bring you a deal. Maybe, maybe it's your finance broker, maybe your accountant, maybe it's your business partner, you know, all those type of things. Um, and the goal is to increase your inbound to a point where it's gonna overtake your outbound activities. Because I can tell you right now that the richest people in the world only deal with inbound opportunities. Think about Jeff Bezos, think about um, you know, Harry Chickaboff. You know, think about all these people, they don't go and outbound, they don't go and hunt for deals, they have deals presented to them. People knock on their door and give them opportunities. So likewise, this is what you want to you know, aspire to. You want agents to go, hey, hey guys, um, hey Tim, I've got this really good deal for you because I've dealt with you in the past. I know this is really going to suit you. You get, a, you get a heads up on it. Maybe it's from your business partners, you know, people that you do, you do business with, you know, because they also have their own network and they might, they might say to you, hey, Sophie, um, you know, my business partner here just came across this. Why don't we do it together? Whatever. Um, and then maybe your brokers. The brokers, your finance brokers, is actually a really, really good source of, of leads because what happens sometimes is they've just done the numbers on a property for another client. But for whatever reason, that client finances don't stack up. But they've already ran the numbers. They know everything about this deal inside out. So they might give you a call. Say, hey, Isabel, hey, I've just done this um, FISO I ran the numbers on this property. It looks really good. Unfortunately, client A can't do it. Maybe you should have a look at it. So that's, you know, that's what you want to do. 
So now let's start with the, now let's talk about the outbounds. So the outbounds, typically what I would do if I'm just starting today's my first day and looking at commercial properties, I'm going to go on to the two main websites, which is real estate, uh, sorry, realcommercial.com.au and commercialrealestate.com.au. So these two are the main um, commercial property websites. So it's, it's, it's owned by the same people as domain and realestate.com. It's the same company that owns them. And how I would do this, I would defi define my parameters. Okay, what is my budget? What type of property? What sort of location? And then once I find interesting properties, I'll then reach out to the agents and ask them a bunch of questions. So let's have a look at some examples. So let me just bring this, let's bring this over. Can somebody give me a, um, oh, these are my, these are my cheat notes. Uh, so can somebody tell me a, a location to search? Just shout it out. Hello. Um, hi, um, can... Where, sorry? Cambridge, New South Wales. I think you guys are talking at the same time. <laughs> Don, Don, did you say did you did you say one? Yeah, I would like you to try Sunnybank in Queensland. Sunny, Sunny Bank. Okay, Sunny Bank yeah. in Queensland. Okay. In one word, yes. All right, perfect. Thank you. All right, Isabel, um, why don't you choose a property type? Um, oh. I would choose all retail. Uh, yeah, I I Isabel, which one, which one do you want to choose? Retail, shops and retail, please. Uh, okay, shops and retail. Okay. And can someone, I think Flo, you typed something. Can you give me a price range? Can you give me a price range? Um, can you try under um, two mediums? All right. Thank you. Let's do that. Okay. Boom. Wow, there's only two. Not much. But that's cool. This is what I would actually do. So I would jump on real, uh, realcommercial.com.au. I'll put in these parameters and I will look at these properties. So I will look at, maybe I'll look at this one. And then... If it seems interesting, I'll literally just reach out and just type in this information in. Let, let's, and then I would sometimes, well, there's only two. Uh, okay, can somebody else give me um, another, um, so, sorry, Don, there's only two, so I, want, I wanted to find something that's got a little bit more <laughs> to, to illustrate um, this point. Uh, so oh, uh, maybe for the property type, you can uncollect the shops and retail. I think like some of the commercial property, they are industrial. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. so you I'm can choose industrial already then. all types. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do all types because it's going to come up with development sites and, yep. this and all that. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, okay. So I've got Sunny Bank Industrial under 2 million. All right. Good work. Okay, so let's have a look. All right, well, this one looks uh, kind of interesting. All right, what am I going to do? I'm literally going to reach out to the agents. I'm going to ask for an information memorandum, price, outgoings. I'm literally going to say, hi, please have an IM information memorandum and a price expectation Thanks. And that's it. All right. So you just, just do that. It's my email address. And just hit send inquiry. I've just done it. Okay. And then you just keep doing it. You just go through, like, this one looks pretty good, actually. Maybe you guys can pick up some good deals while we're doing this exercise. All right. So you just keep doing. And usually what I do is I try to hit every single property in that suburb that I'm interested in. 
especially when you're starting off because you want to compare apples and apples. So I'll probably go through probably the first three pages and hit every single one of them and you know look for um, uh, uh, information coming 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 to us. So I'll do one more. So I've got um, I've got Liverpool. Someone said Liverpool in New South Wales, industrial under two million. Okay, let's have a look. So we've got eight options. So we've got this Preston, this one, this one. This this looks interesting. Yeah, these look pretty interesting. Oh, these are self storage facilities. Yeah, so maybe this one. So likewise, I'll do the same. Oh, it's already pre-filled. I send inquiries. So right now, I'm collecting information. And then quite often, if you dedicate a couple of hours in the morning before you start your day or maybe in the evening when the kids are asleep, and you shoot 30 to 40 of these inquiries out, or maybe 50 if you can, the next morning, your inbox will be full. And then you can start triaging these opportunities. So going back to the spreadsheet, I mean, go back to the, to the, um, to the, to the, uh, big opponent, to the, to the presentation. This is what I'm, this is what I'm asking during the triage review. I'm asking for, I'm asking what is price expectation. Notice I didn't write price guide. There's a very subtle difference because in places like Queensland, uh, agents are not allowed to give price guides. It's just a funny legislation. Uh, but if you ask for price expectation, they'll say, yeah, no worries. This property is, we're asking $2 million. Number two it is very important is we want a copy of the information memorandum. So the information memorandum is going to give us a few key things. So number one, it's going to give us obviously the description of the opportunity. It's going to give us the property parameters, such as the land and building sizes, zoning, things like that. It's going to give us a tenancy and outgoing schedule and give us floor plans and photos. Okay, so this is the information that you need to triage a property. So I'll give you guys a look in what is a good um, IM and what is a really bad IM. So I'll show you a relatively good IM, which is this one here. Okay, so as you can see, so it's got the information, it's got the details, it's got the key facts, and it's got the location overview. Um, it's got the lease overview and all the information that you need. And it's got a pretty comprehensive outgoing schedule. This is probably one of the best that I've seen. Um, and then it's got some photos. Um, and then it's got your outgoings, uh, uh, sorry, your, your title search. Um, your floor plans, and it's got your outgoings invoice as well. So this is probably what I would consider um, a good information memorandum. Now I'm going to show you a bad information memorandum. This is a bad information memorandum. I asked the agent, hey, um, can you send me the, the information memorandum? Yeah, no worries. This is what he sent me. All right. So it's, it's pretty poor. <laughs> uh, um, I'll show you one more, which I think is a pretty good one. Is this, is this one here. So, you know, again, it's got some photos. It's got the executive summary. You've got the outgoings, um, some photos, some descriptions. It's got a pretty good tenancy schedule. Got some more images and things about Toowoomba. Okay, so this is what I would consider a relatively good information memorandum. Now, so once you've got all that information, what am I looking for? How do I actually do this triage? So here are a few, few things that I typically look for or, or I will review. So number one, is this asset brand new or established? Now, in my experience, 99% um, of brand new stock it's very difficult to find value at angles for obvious reasons, right? Developers just spend 
you know, a bunch of money, a lot of time, maximizing the usage of the land, of the site. So it's very difficult to find value add opportunities, brand new stock. But hey, there's always exceptions. Maybe the valuers, oh sorry, the developers, you know, um, press for money, selling at a discount. There's always exceptions to the rules. But generally speaking, when I see a brand new uh, opportunity, I just chuck it in the bin. Generally, that's what I do. Um, so I always tend to look for established properties that are a little bit old because I know the chances of finding a value add angle is higher. The second thing that I'm looking at is the whale and the tenancy schedule. Who remembers what whale stands for? Hands up. Cool. Okay, the weighted average lease expiry. Why is this important? Because I want to know how long do I have to wait before I can value add. So let's say you buy, let's say you find a property that's got a 10 year lease on it. What you, there's nothing you can do to the property for 10 years because there's a tenant in place. So maybe um, depending on my preference, maybe I, I want something that's got a whale of one year, maybe two years, maybe maximum three years. So if I, look, if I find a property that's got a whale of one three years, because that's my preference, I generally discount it unless the upside is really substantial. So if, it's, if the upside is yeah, 60, 70, 100%, but I have to wait four years, then that's how I would still look at it. And then the next thing I'm looking at is what's the rate per square meter on the rent and what's the rate per square meter on the asking price? Because I want to start benchmarking this uh, against all the other properties for sale in the market. Because I want to see whether there's a misalignment between this property and what all the other properties are now selling for. Because if I can identify a misalignment, Let's say this property is currently rented for 80 bucks per square meter, but I know as a fact the building across the road just rented for $120 per square meter. I see there's a misalignment that I can quickly add this to the next stage. Number four is what's the current yield versus the potential yield. So what I mean by that is, um, let's say there's a, there's, a, there's a property that's got multiple tenants and there's, there's a vacancy in there, which means the current yield based on the current income is maybe 6%. But if it's fully leased, maybe it would get 7%. So it's really important to understand whether there is a large enough gap as well between current and potential yield to see whether there is enough upside. That's another way of measuring upside. And then last but not least, what is the upside? Okay, and what's the highest and best use for the property? Now, as we go through the next sessions, um, you know, with the audio, the, the, the rest of the strategies, um, I'll be able to show you how to work out what are the upsides. So we probably won't cover a lot about it today, but these five are the things that I look for. Is it new or established? What is the whale? What's the rate per square meter for rent and price? What's the current potential yield? And most importantly, what is the upside? If you can't think of an upside within five minutes of studying the property, it's probably not worth it. It's probably too hard. You move on because you'll look at a thousand properties. Okay, does that make sense so far, everyone? Hand up.